Let's talk about the news that everyone wants to talk about. What's happening with Kanye West, or as people are calling him on the internet, Kanye. It's wild to hear white people call Kanye a coon. And it, like, it's really interesting. Uh, a white person calling any black person a coon online is ridiculous. Or even just in general. It's just, we live in crazy times. But hey, we are where we are, innit? So Kanye had a fashion show a couple of days ago for Yeezy Season 9. It was something that was announced kind of out of the blue. Um, I think rumblings were starting to stir once he just basically started attending all the fashion weeks. But he was doing that quite often last season also. He just kind of, you know, putting his face about and being about in the scene and industry a lot more, especially post Virgil Abloh's death, which I'll touch upon later. I actually got some things to talk about that as well. But in general, he was kind of around. And of course, the news got leaked that he was going to show again the Yeezy Season at Paris Fashion Week, which is, you know, widely regarded as the top, the press, the, resi- the pièce de résistance in terms of um, fashion weeks out there, because, you know, they have also, you know, women's fashion wear, obviously, in Paris Fashion Week, super important, but also the showrooms in and around Paris, mostly around men's stuff, mostly around streetwear and menswear and all that sort of good stuff. People go there because a lot of accounts turn up there in places that you want to be kind of situated and next to. Even a brand like Trapstar, which is, I would say, as far away removed from Paris Fashion Week as anything is out there. They had a, like a dinner sort of pop-up event type thing over there too. So clearly there's a lot of buzz around Paris in terms of getting your face there, being seen, blah de blah 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 Kanye does it, Kanye knows it, he did a thing and he presented the show. Now, the show itself was pretty forgettable, to be completely honest. The clothes are what they are. Just, you know, it's the same things you've seen before from Kanye and Yeezy. Um, just now he's basically adopting more of a black sort of a colour palette. Loads of granites, loads of uh, greys and bronzes and whatever. Just variation of blacks and charcoal and whatever it may be. But it's the same shapes. Um, for me personally, I think in this show he's saying there was no um, zips. Everything was pull over or pull on type of thing. But the real thing that really ticked people off immediately when he was doing the show, for what ticked me off, first of all, was the kids' choir thing. There's like a Sunday service kids' choir thing and there Northwest was in the choir singing, looking cute and singing her voice out. But overall, when it comes to kids' choir, unless you girls sound like The Temptations or The Kids, I don't want to hear it. It sounds awful. Maybe because I spent too much time in the church. I spent basically 18 years of my life in the church, essentially indoctrinated, having to go to church, flipping three times a day sometimes, like insane amounts, Sunday school, all that stuff. I had enough of it. So the fact that he's now discovered Christianity all of a sudden, you know, in his mid 40s, I don't care. I have no interest in it whatsoever. So when I'm seeing kids, you know, bellowing their hearts out and trying to catch these notes, I'm like, count me out. So I'm already out of it. Then it just continues, it keeps going on and on. I was like, shit this is the soundtrack for the fucking show all right cool let's listen to these kids fucking destroy these songs right they're doing it they're doing their thing the the what you call it the choir leader's trying to, his best to kind of get them in tune and make them not whatever that follow directions but then you know the, forget all that the thing that really set everyone off was the beginning when Kanye is d- decides to come out and essentially rant and rave at his audience, they kind of it's been it's in this venue where it kind of looks like he's in the Colosseum, which was maybe done by a purpose, not too sure. But the venue is like these spiral staircases, as this open plan sort of space at the bottom floor where he's standing at, and then everyone else was on these little uh, balcony foyer bits. I don't know what they called, right? And they were kind of in a circle, so it kind of looked like a Roman Colosseum, and he was there like baying for blood, right? And he was shouting at people in the in the audience. I know these are fashion kids variety people. I saw John Galliano, I saw Hamish Bowles, I saw Anna Wintour, I saw Edward Innerfall, like loads of established people. Of course, Naomi Campbell walking in the show. Everyone's legit. He's shouting, they're bellowing them. But then the most important thing when he's shouting at them, he's wearing a t shirt, a long sleeve t shirt. Everyone kept saying it's a hoodie. It's not a hoodie, long sleeve t shirt that had on the back of it White Lives Matter in big white font. And I think at the front of the shirt, it had a picture of John Pope II. It was this kind of weird, like, merch design t-shirt kind of thing with his face, you know, superimposed a couple of times, looking different directions and some candles and shit. And, you know, just Google John Pope the second controversy and you'll see some interesting articles on him involving kids involving charities and stuff so i don't know if he was if that's a good thing or a bad thing but that's the shirt and i'm making it set people off but when i saw it in my initial reaction was to laugh my initial reaction was to laugh and to also agree 
with the overall sentiment because what I thought when I first saw this, because I've been paying attention with the news, what's been happening with the Black Lives Matter organization, not the movement, let's talk about that, the organization was that it's been, you know, it's been heavily publicized and heavily kind of exposed that the people behind it or some people associated with Black Lives Matter organization are crooks, as are most people who work in these well established charities, right? Which is why people always say when you go and give money to charities and stuff, you should really look into where the money is going to, what sort of actions are going to be taken once you give the money, like really discernible one, two, three stuff in terms of what's going to happen. Because for the most part, it feels like from the looks of it, how prevalent it is, it's very easy to get away with swindling people's money, um, especially well intentioned people's money, because they just want to do the right thing. They want to give it to you. They don't even want to ask any questions. So it's the easiest kind of robbery especially when people are in pain. So all, all these articles out there about Kanye, sorry, about Black Lives Matter organization being crooks and people behind it basically profiting on it for their own personal gain, buying mansions and stuff and all this sort of nonsense. So we know that conversation doesn't exist. So my first thing when I saw that was like, oh yeah, that's him essentially poking fun at this organization. That's my initial thing. It wasn't like he was like saying white lives matter and being like a flipping white nationalist or whatever it may be because you know by definition he cannot i just thought that was a kind of a bigger conversation around hey you said black lives matter organization now white lives matter do you know what i mean that kind of thing that's why i thought he was kind of going with it but obviously this man's um kind of insistence this kind of rejection of intellectualism right and i think cultural overall there's this kind of war on intellectualism there's a war on authority figures on people that actually know what they're talking about everyone's kind of got a voice i think this is what's kind of led to this because this is the same dude who says he's proud to say he doesn't read books so it's not surprising that he'd put out a t-shirt like this with no context no explanation no background no nothing then get pissed off when people get pissed off about it. It's, it makes complete sense. Isn't it? It's a typical Kanye thing to do, especially this version of Kanye. Put something out like this to get people annoyed and then get surprised when they're annoyed or get annoyed that they're annoyed. Like it just doesn't, you know, you can't get in sweetness. So of course, the reaction online when he put this out was, wow, people were going insane, right? They were not having it in the slightest. They went to absolutely beat him up. Obviously, he's there wearing the ricardo tishi uh designed burberry sandals which ironically enough these might be his legacy at flipping givenchy sorry at burberry ricardo tishi one of the most legendary well-respected talented designers in the industry has absolutely you know fluffed it at burberry for whatever reason and again it's another topic from another podcast but i'm obviously super interested and intrigued about what actually happens to people like that or that what's the cause of that it's happening to nicholas guest gear at louis vuitton it's happened to flipping ricardo tishi at burberry what happens to these really high level designers why is it suddenly they wake up and they just can't design good clothes anymore the stuff they put on the runway is just terrible was it that they had a better support system at their prior job like nicholas, nicholas guest gear is a good example did he have a better team at Balenciaga and then suddenly he goes to Louis Vuitton and it's a different team and he hasn't got the same amount of talent around him um, Ricardo Tishi he just ran out of the the good juices and he you know didn't was able, wasn't able to kind of recreate the magic that he had at Givenchy back in the day what actually happens I'd love to know but anyway regardless he's wearing the legacy of Ricardo Tishi on his feet and doing his damn thing have a good picture and then of course you see this picture at the end as well that um kind of someone decided to put up on her ins on her twitter too with them both wearing the white lives matter t-shirt one in white one in black with the with the flipping logo in the back and then what i want to say where is it da, da, da. oh yeah, of course the reaction to it wasn't the greatest so everyone kind of going you know you know typical response that you think people would have to get it because of course no context was given everyone was kind of shouting at each other so that made complete sense um and then continuing on and then what actually kind of really i think set people off and made people really pissed off about the entire thing was Kanye then decided because people were angry and pissed off he was angry and pissed off and one of the people that didn't like it at the time when they showed the show was this lady here on the right and her name is Gabriella Karifa Johnson who is the what is it global fashion director I think of Vogue overall so somebody is quite prominent in the industry somebody that a lot of people have got a lot of time for I think if I'm not mistaken I saw articles of her in the past that she's a very good stylist again I'm not really too familiar with the lady at all I don't really check for Vogue in that way but from what I can read online very well regarded very well rated has her own clout has her own name you know whatever whatever the deal is but Kanye clearly didn't like the fact that she has some bad things to say about his collection or about the, you know the t-shirts the, the in general and then i think the first thing that she put out was this 
Yeah, the first thing, the first thing she put out was this, right? My thoughts shared with a friend, which was a selection of screenshots of her DMing other friends, uh, you know, about the show that she was watching in real time. She said the following, what I feel like, what, what I feel is that he's not fully aware of the difference between approaching, so appropriating BLM and subverting the Make America Great Again hat. Although I disagree with his thesis there, I understand his idea that the hat was a ready-made and its value was intrinsic to context signature of the artist. When worn by Trump, it's racist. When, work, when, work by, when worn by Kanye, it's about liberation. Um, he neglected to realize the importance of the object when he tried to extend the, that kind of subversion to BLM slogan. One subject, uh, one is object, one is ethos. To be fair, I think she's being overly charitable to him even in this part. But anyway, this this basically proves she's an actual nice person. It continues. I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to illustrate the dystopian world in the future when the whiteness might become extinct, or at least we would be enough to endanger to demand a defense. And the other screenshot is what uh, is what justifies mass incarceration murder and our mass and indeed even the advent of slavery the idea that blackness must be snuffed out or will is so surely supersede whiteness in power and influence if given the chance and it's so hugely irresponsible to furnish the dangerous extremist with this kind of fictional narrative the added layer of him having kids from this his donda school performing the soundtrack it really felt like the divide between the indoctrination and education has never been finer which i agree with i said already the fucking performance from the kids was terrible just sonically but obviously she made a far better and more succinct and intelligent point in that regard and then Gabriella continues to kind of you know put a real pin a real punto a real period at the end of that conversation that she had with a friend that she was sharing so this follows it's become clear that some viewers think my previous post containing my working evolving um, thoughts on Kanye's show was some sort of distorted justification for incredibly irresponsible and dangerous act of sending White Lives Matter t-shirts down the runway. Please understand, it wasn't. The t-shirts this man conceived, produced and shared with the world are pure violence. This is no excuse. There's no art here. I'm sorry. I failed to make that clear for I did. I'm sorry to make that clear. I thought I did. I do think if you asked Kanye he'd say that there was art and revolution and all of those things in that t-shirt there isn't and as well as um and as we all work through the trauma of this moment especially most of uh, of those of us who suffered in those rooms let's have some grace for one another now personally for me I'm a big believer that words are not violence maybe it's a maybe it's a dude thing um, maybe because you know essentially guys always have an underlying threat of violence when they are kind of going back and forth and arguing with each other you know at any point it could go left very quickly there is no kind of you know you're never going to see a continual Nicki Minaj and Cardi B type of beef with guys it doesn't get to that point eventually hands will be you know thrown um, sometimes in America guns will be toted sometimes here in the, U in the UK or parts of Europe a knife will be pulled out it gets really extreme so when people tell me words of violence i don't agree because i know especially when it comes on the internet i can turn the internet off i can leave social media i can whatever not decide to read your review but when it comes to actual violence those are things are you know are going to impact me physically and things that maybe in some cases i can't necessarily avoid but you know whatever this is another political conversation i don't want to get involved in but the post that really i rated people and i thought myself was incredibly distasteful was this post that kanye put out regarding when you obviously saw the comments so that lady made and it's as follows there's a picture of this gabriella girl and i think this is the outfit she actually wore to the show and you know maybe you say the outfit's frumpy maybe you don't like the outfit itself it is a fair comment to make but him basically dismissing her worth because in his opinion he doesn't like what she wears and because essentially what he's trying to say without being because again you know Kanye like, likes to act like he's a big dog and he can say what he wants but he doesn't necessarily say what he wants because you know he's still scared to piss off certain people but what he actually wants to say is that she's a fat and ugly woman that what he really wants to say right he doesn't find her attractive he thinks she's fat and she can't dress so in those boxes with unticked with the x on them she, and obviously she's not richer than him and obviously that means she can't comment on what he has to say or anything at all because you, you, again this is this is kind of a going away for the point but you didn't he, see him give the same amount of vim that he gave her that he cared to flip in fucking gg did did you and i wonder why so let's continue but the, the caption says as follows Kanye West posts of a picture of her wearing an outfit and it says, this is not a fashion person. You speak on Ye, I'm going to speak on you, Ox Trevor Noah, right? 
whatever that means. I think he thinks he dunked on Trevor Noah because Trevor Noah had a difference of opinion in terms of how he was going about things. Who knows? This is Kanye's world. So that obviously pissed people off. People weren't too happy about it. Um, and then, of course, that led to a series of people kind of coming out and defending Gabriella, which I felt was absolutely incredible to see in the fashion industry because we don't see that often enough when people are kind of getting um, bombarded and targeted. Usually it's from the fucking brands and the platforms themselves, not really from fans and other artists and other designers. But this is an interesting point in time, especially considering the relevancy and, uh, you know, the command of, of no, what do I say? the clout that he Kanye basically has amongst fashion brands and platforms and stuff because they know he generates clicks and whatnot so people are kind of you know hesitant to call him out because they don't want to risk not having him kind of show up and bump their numbers and all that sort of stuff because you know considering what he said about the fashion industry in general the fact that he's still able to have the likes of Anna Winter and all those likes turn out to show must mean he's held in some regard within the industry but then I thought one of the more interesting sort of uh, comments and feedback to Kanye was the comment from fucking Gigi Hadid. I thought that was absolutely stupendous. I really did. And it really kind of um, exposed and cut deep what the overall issue I feel like in a scene is regarding all this sort of stuff, right? Um, and this is a post that Kanye put out that he deleted where it shows him um, receiving a text from the designer and obviously one of the models that was in a show called Moa Lola and she posted the following as a text message to him I also don't think you should insult that writer you could actually have a real conversation about the t-shirt and this is a looks like a new text maybe it's a new phone but I find it quite telling that a lot of the texts that he posts I guess maybe somebody crops out but for the most part they look like it's the first time these people have spoken to him like via text message so either he doesn't like people talking to him or people don't talk to him or he doesn't have actual real friends. But it's interesting that there's always like, there's not a lot of text to kind of go through. It's just like the first text message ever sent to him. Anyway, in the comment section of that post, GJT said the following. You wish you had the percentage of her intellect. You have no idea. Ha ha. If there's actually a point to any of your shit, she might be the only person that could save you. As if, as if the honour of being invited to your show should keep someone from giving their opinion. You're a bully and you're a joke. Also, we've got that absolute redact in the bottom, that flipping produced by Zach Guy trying to clutch it off the back of Kanye, which has been embarrassing to say the least. But I thought that was a pretty decent call out overall. And it kind of exposed the really, and of course that's the other response that Kanye did. I know, I know Anna hates those boots, which is 